So today's video is going to be a little bit uh, unconventional, uh, you know, should we say. Um, and uh, it all was stemmed from a, a, another video on YouTube that I watched. And it was so intriguing, inspiring, heartwarming, uh, you know, all the feels going on. But it led to a lot of, a lot of thinking on, on my part and considering some things that I, I really hadn't considered before about, you know, how we listen. And particularly why in many cases, uh, what I like in terms of either music or sound or my, my home audio system or my home theater system um, are not to other people's tastes. And, uh, you know, we typically blame, you know, people's, you know, hearing for that. You know, uh, if somebody likes a bright speaker that's tipped up at high frequencies, you know, we'd say, well, maybe they've got some hearing loss at high frequencies. And the fact that they like speakers that are tipped up up there is because they're hearing them as, as linear, whereas, you know, somebody who doesn't have hearing loss hears that as a, as a bright, uh, you know, screechy, spitty sounding speaker. So what I'd like you to do, and this is the unconventional part, is stop this video now, uh, follow the link below, go and watch that same video, and please come back here and watch the rest of the video that I'm gonna continue with now so that we have uh, a little discussion and a little thought of, of where, where I started thinking about some things based on that video. So go and watch it now and please come back. So for those of you that went and decided to watch the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I, I, I found it absolutely incredible. Um, I've personally known uh, uh, a few people with uh, not completely deaf, but with uh, that were hard of hearing. Um, and, you know, it was it was incredible and inspiring to me that uh, this gentleman uh, discovered a way to experience music without technically hearing it through the vibrations in his fingertips that were carried by this mylar balloon. And what was very interesting was, you know, the different material for the balloon um, meant uh, he could hear differently. And he, he did clearly say that, uh, you know, there are deficiencies in this method. Like he, he's not getting all of the information, but the fact that through his fingertips, through his hands, he's picking up these sounds and vibrations enough to uh, experience the music. Now, where I started going with my thought process as I, as I considered this, obviously for you know, people with hearing deficiencies or people that are deaf, uh, if, if this can work, and, and as mentioned in the video, there's been some research done um, that shows uh, that essentially our, our brains are, would be rewiring themselves so that information normally processed by the, the auditory uh, part of our, our hearing system uh, that are no longer functioning get remapped in the brain so that, you know, other methods hear vibration picked up by hands, fingertips are remapped essentially to the auditory cortex in the brain where it's processed as sound even though it's not coming from the ear. So where I'm going with this is I suspect that at some level all of us hear, all of us are perceiving sound not just from what's coming into our eardrums or you know through bone conduction, vibration at very high frequencies can go directly, um, directly into the into the bone structure in the inner ear, and and uh, and we pick up the signal that way. So where I where I'm going here is that maybe, maybe the way that different people experience sound, the way that they have preferences, could be due to differences in the way not just in the hearing mechanism itself 
but you know how their particular bodies are handling that vibration information or processing it and it may be physical differences i started thinking about even you know what you know what type of chair or couch do you sit on is it hard material are there more vibrations getting up into your body when when listening particularly at higher levels um, than somebody who's sitting on a soft padded you know chair like all of these ideas came into my head so really what i would love to know after you've watched that you know now or now that you've watched that video what are your thoughts what what do you think i mean am i completely out to lunch here is this this a completely crazy idea i mean proving it would be you know for a layman would be very very difficult you'd need to do a you know research study with brain mapping and all kinds of things like that but it was just something i thought about and i'll tell you something i am going to get a balloon a mylar balloon and I'm going to try this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see what I actually am perceiving through my hands because th the whole video, as I said, was, was fascinating, um, fascinating to me. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's trying to explain something we all know. We all know that uh, why, you know, you can listen to a song that you have an emotional attachment to or the, the crappiest little transistor radio or a, or a half blown up car stereo where the tweeters are not even working and still enjoy the, enjoy the process of listening to that song because of the emotional map that happens in the, in the brain. So uh, it's just another level showing the complexity of how we hear and maybe explains or goes a little way to explaining why, you know, I hear things differently than everybody else and my preference in, in an audio system or a pair of speakers might be different than, than yours. So thanks a lot for watching, thanks for coming back and, you know, I hope if you hadn't already heard about or seen that video that you, you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for watching.